And the readings will now be given by Dede from Georgia. I will read from the Bible. Matthew. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Genesis. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. James, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Matthew. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. 
Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Psalm. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. We sustain truth not by accepting, but by rejecting a lie. Jesus said of personified evil that it was a liar and the father of it. Truth creates neither a lie, a capacity to lie, nor a liar. If mankind would relinquish the belief that God makes sickness, sin, and death, or makes man capable of suffering on account of this malevolent triad, the foundations of error would be sapped and error's destruction ensured. Stand porter at the door of thought, admitting only such conclusions as you wish realized in bodily results, you will control yourself harmoniously. When the condition is present, which you say induces disease, whether it be air, exercise, heredity, contagion, or accident. Then perform your office as porter and shut out these unhealthy thoughts and fears. Exclude from mortal mind the offending errors. Then the body cannot suffer from them. The issues of pain or pleasure must come through mind. And like a watchman forsaking his post, we admit the intruding belief forgetting that through divine help, we can forbid this entrance. Mind is the master of the corporeal senses and can conquer sickness, sin, and death. Exercise this God-given authority. Take possession of your body and govern its feeling and action. Rise in the strength of spirit to resist all that is unlike good. God has made man capable of this, and nothing can vitiate the ability and power divinely bestowed on man. Be firm in your understanding that the divine mind governs and that in science, man reflects God's government. A false belief is both the tempter and the tempted the sin and the sinner, the disease and its cause. It is well to be calm in sickness. To be hopeful is still better. But to understand that sickness is not real and that truth can destroy its seeming reality is best of all. For this understanding is the universal and perfect remedy. Like the great exemplar, the healer should speak to disease as one having authority over it, leaving soul to master the false evidences of the corporeal senses and to assert its claims over mortality and disease. The same principle cures both sin and sickness. When divine science overcomes faith in a carnal mind and faith in God destroys all faith in sin, and in material methods of healing, then sin, disease, and death will disappear. Eradicate the image of disease from the perturbed thought before it has taken tangible shape in conscious thought, alias the body, and you prevent the development of disease. This task becomes easy if you understand that every disease is an error and has no character nor type except what mortal mind assigns to it. By lifting thought above error or disease, 
and contending persistently for truth, you destroy error. The advancing stages of Christian science are gained through growth, not accretion. Idleness is the foe of progress. And scientific growth manifests no weakness, no emasculation, no elusive vision, no dreamy absentness, no insubordination to the laws that be, no loss nor lack of what constitutes true manhood. Growth is governed by intelligence, by the active, all-wise, law-creating, law-disciplining, law-abiding principle God. The real Christian scientist is constantly accentuating harmony in word and deed, mentally and orally perpetually repeating this diapason of heaven. Good is my God, and my God is good. Love is my God, and my God is love. Beloved students, you have entered the path. Press patiently on. God is good. And good is the reward of all who diligently seek God. Your growth will be rapid if you love good supremely and understand and obey the way shower, who going before you has scaled the steep ascent of Christian science, stands upon the mount of holiness, the dwelling place of our God, and bathes in the baptismal font of eternal love. As you journey and be time sigh for rest beside the still waters, ponder this lesson of love. Learn its purpose, and in hope and faith, where heart meets heart, reciprocally blessed, drink with me the living waters of the spirit of my life purpose to impress humanity with the genuine recognition of practical operative Christian science.